In this video, we will be doing customer churn prediction using artificial neural network. Customer churn is nothing but a measure of how many of your customers are leaving the business. For example, if you are in a wireless business, sometimes people stop their wireless uh, service and they move on to the different service. Similar with banks. Banks also use customer churn prediction where the customer closes the account and they go with some different bank. So then the previous bank wants to know why customers are leaving the business. This uh, concept applies to pretty much any business where you have incoming loyal customer and all of a sudden the customer leaves the business. And deep learning can help you with a great amount in, um, you know, Kind of measuring why customers are living and if once you know why customers are living you can take appropriate business actions so that the customers don't leave the business we will uh, write code in python using tensorflow we'll be building simple artificial neural network and we will also discuss about precision recall f1 score all of those terms we will demystify we'll also or on a classification report. Uh, so overall, it will be a very useful hands-on coding session today. In the end, we will also have an exercise for you to solve. So let's begin. I will be using Telecom Customer Churn dataset from Kegel. I have a link of this dataset in the video description below. So you can go here, click on this download button and I downloaded it to a file which looks something like this. So if you look at this file, there are various features or attributes such as customer. This is one record for one customer. Okay. And that customer is a female. Senior citizen is zero means the person is not young. It's not a senior citizen partner. Then we have dependents, the tenure tenure as in like how long this person is with this particular service phone service multiple lines and internet service see there are so many useful attributes that we can make use of uh, if you look at monthly charges total charges because customer churn might be impacted by the monthly charges if the monthly charges that you're offering is very high then maybe customer might decide to leave i have loaded that data in my Jupyter notebook and my data frame looks something like this. Um, I have also imported some useful libraries. And now whenever you are working on a machine learning problem, the first thing is that you do is you try to do data exploration. Now the very first thing I noticed was customer ID is useless. When you're building machine learning model, customer ID is not going to help you. So I'm just going to straight away drop this column and when you do in place true it will drop this column and it will update this uh, data frame okay so when you do control enter and run it and when you do df dot d types it will show you all the columns along with their types so you see that customer id is gone also for remaining columns it is showing the data type one quick thing i noticed was my total charges here is object see my monthly charges is float but total charges is object so why is that so what's really going on here so here what i will do is df dot total charges dot values you see this is a string actually i need to convert it to a number i don't know why the data is like this if you look at monthly charges and then monthly charges will be a number so first thing of course you need to convert this into a number column and the way you do that is by using pd2 numeric function something like this so when you do that it will convert this into numbers now i'm getting an error because there are some values which has space into it so we need to tackle the spaces. So first, uh, I want to just quickly look at those rows which has space. I want to see what's going on. So one way to do that would be doing this, which is I'm doing PD to numeric, numeric. And by the way, when you do PD to numeric and when you supply errors is equal to coerce, it will ignore the errors basically it will do conversion for whatever columns and wherever you have space 
it will ignore it will put like na in it um so that's the purpose of errors now i want to do is null so this is returning a numpy series and when you do is null for each of these rows it will tell you if the value is null or not and of course you see false because we have so many rows and that those rows some of those rows are probably hidden the, the one which has spaces so how do you uh, find those rows well this thing you can supply into your data frame so when you have a data frame like this and when you supply this whole thing it will serve as an index and wherever the value is set to true it will show you that row so see I found total these many rows and if you scroll here you will see the total charges is blank for all these rows now I can drop these rows because if you look at this data frame I have like what 11 rows here okay I mean you can do like this is a data frame by the way so if you do dot shape it will tell you 11 rows 20 columns okay so 11 rows dropping 11 rows out of out of how many rows okay let's see so df dot shape will show you the original data frame rows and columns out of 7000 rows if you drop 11 it's not a big deal so I will just keep it simple and I will just drop it uh, also if you want to look at this 488 row the specific value for a total charges one way you can do that is using i lock so i lock is i is integer lock is location so integer location this is like array indexing basically so here it is showing you the row number 488 and you see total charges is blank you can also do something like total charges and you notice the value is blank all right so let's drop all of these rows which is close to 11 i think 11 yeah so how do you drop these rows well you can do this you can say total charges if it is not equal to space then keep it otherwise drop it and the new data frame this will return data frame by the way and i want to store it into a new data frame called df1 hope it is all making sense if you don't know much about pandas please follow my pandas tutorial on youtube you can go to youtube say code basic space pandas tutorial and it i have created a very nice tutorial playlist for pandas where anyone even a high school student can learn it easily all right so i dropped all those rows and my total charges is still object so all the blanks are gone so now the next thing is you know we did this thing and it was giving an error so now let's do the same thing again and see if after dropping space if it gives an error or not we have df1 by the way now see now it's not giving an error so what i can do is i can store that into the total charges column okay and when I execute this um, now my data type for the total charges will be float so you can quickly see now it is float all right so that part looks good um, now the next thing I want to do is I want to do some quick visualization okay so let's do some quick visualization so here um okay so what kind of visualization i want to do all right so tenure seems to be an interesting column tenure means how loyal the customer is if you have a wireless plan if the customer is with your company for 20 years 30 years it means the customer is loyal i want to know how many of the loyal customers are leaving and for that I think histogram might be a good idea where you know you draw the histogram where you draw side by side uh, the number of customer leaving and number of customer not leaving and uh, basically your x-axis will be the tenure okay so how do you find out 
the tenure of the customers which are not living. So just think about this. When you do this, you are finding all the customers with no. Okay. See, this customer is not living. Okay, fine. If this customer is not living, then what is the tenure? Okay, so tenure, or total charges, whatever. Yeah. See, this customer is with company for one year, he's not living. This customer is with the company for 34, I don't know, 34 months or 34 years, maybe 34 months. Yeah, because he's 72. <laughs> so 34 months and the person is not living. So all these guys are not living. All right. And if you want to know their tenure, if you do this, you get the tenure. So these are the customers with 72 months, 10 months and so on, and they are not living. So I will store this into a variable called tenure John no. Okay. And then similarly, I will get another NumPy series where my tenure uh, is John is yes. So these are all the customers which are not leaving the company and it is displaying their tenure. Okay. Now if I want to do a plot of this, I can do like plot dot hist. Okay. And in the histogram, you can plot these side by side. Okay. So first I will plot yes and then I will plot no. All right. So this is showing some chart. I don't know what is what. So I want to just uh, make the visualization a little better. And I want to say, let's try to paint color as green and you know, like green and red because green means customer is staying. Yes. Red means customer is leaving. No, you know, so when you do that, all right, my colors are looking good. I want to have a label actually, so that I know which color means what. And that label, I can have it like this. All right, so it's not showing because I don't have a legion. So you have to, in matplotlib, you have to do this. Again, for matplotlib, I have a nice tutorial playlist where I have very simple examples. So please watch it if you don't have idea about matplotlib. So this chart is nice. Okay, I will just add, um, you know, like X and Y, because X axis, it doesn't know. We don't know like what it is, what it is representing. So I'm saying, okay, X axis is tenure. Y axis means number of customer and the, the, the title of the charge is chart is customer churn prediction visualization. Okay. Chart looks much better. If you observe this carefully, you will notice that the people who are with the company for a long time, let's say 70 months, here is like 70 months, their uh, more majority of the customers are not living. See, around more than 1000 customers with tenure equal to 70 or more are not living. And less than maybe less than even 100 customers are living who have that kind of tenure. So see, this kind of visualization can help you give a quick insights on what's going on with your data. I did this plot for tenure. We can do the same plot for, let's say monthly charges. You know, sometimes if the monthly charge is very high, customers might leave. So all you will do is exactly same chart. I'm copy paste. I'm doing copy paste of code just to save time. But here really, it's the same code as previous one, but instead of tenure, I have monthly charges. Okay. So it's the same chart, just the column is different. And here, what it is saying is, uh, customers who have very high charge, for example, close to 120, see they're there, they are living more customers who are in mid range. They are kind of okay. Overall, this company has customer living. You see like customer with no is more than customer with yes. So the cust overall company is in, in a trouble, I would say. One thing I noticed while I was looking at a data frame is many of the columns has yes and no. So I want to find out the unique values in each column and kind of figure out the yes, no column so that I can do label encoding. 
and for that I will quickly run a for loop so what I will do is how do you run a for loop on every column you can do for call in def df okay for column in df see when you do for column in df and print column it will print all the columns as simple as that and then if you print df column dot unique it will print unique values in each of the columns you see of course you want to know what column that is and you can use python app string for that so here what you can do is you can say okay uh, my column is this so it will take this variable and it will print it and then the unique values will be this so again you have to put it in a curly bracket this is python app uh, format strings so this is telling me gender has female and male senior citizen has zero and one so you'll see many columns which has know your type of values all right now i want to put this code in the function because we'll be using it a lot and i also want to print those columns where the data type is uh, an object because those are categorical columns like tenure etc are numerical columns so i want to skip it and this is the way you skip it so now it is showing you all only the object type of column so let's put this into a function okay so now this is a function and you can call this function on df1 data frame by calling this function you are printing unique values for all your categorical columns here i observe no internet service no internet service is kind of like no only so i should probably replace all these values with no so if you have no internet service i will replace with no if you have no phone service i want to replace it with no okay and so let me just see here for example here no internet service this so in this row i want instead of this i want to say no because that is the same as this no okay and you all know if you have followed my pandas tutorial that data frame has a function called replace so you can replace no internet service with no and when you do in place it will modify the exit this data frame if you don't supply in place by the way you have to do this okay i don't want to do this that's why i am saying this oops all right and after i replace no internet service i also want to replace no phone service with no so everyone like we are doing data cleaning right now we are in a data cleaning phase trying to get our data frame ready so that we can run neural network on it okay and when after doing that when you print unique values you'll notice it now you don't see this no internet service no phone service now you see yes no yes no etc there are these categorical columns uh, which we need to handle uh, but we'll do that later but first what i want to do is i want to replace yes and no with maybe one and zero right makes sense because we all know machine learning models do not understand text so we have to convert every text or a string type of column to a number and the best way to uh, convert yes and no to number is one and zero so let's see how many columns have yes and no so see all these columns have yes and no and i have created this array see all this the partner has yes and no yeah dependence has yes and no yeah and what we'll do is we'll go through all these columns so just think about it if you want to replace we already saw the function replace you need to go through all the columns and call a replace function so i will do replace here like this by the way in replace you can supply a dictionary where you can say replace yes with one no with zero okay and so when i execute it 
I executed this twice and that's why it is showing me that uh, but it actually worked so I'm gonna just ignore it okay and when you now print the unique values in this data frame you'll see that those yes and no are replaced by one and zero okay so I'm again going through all the columns and just printing the unique values all right we are making a good progress friends we have done I think 50% of our data cleaning we also have gender column female and male so again you can replace it with maybe one and zero we don't need to hot hot encode all this because if you have two categories it's okay if you do like zero and one so for female and male column also I will just do this and um, you know if you want to know now after doing this replace if you do unique you'll find one zero all right so that is also looking very good what is not looking good is still these columns have this text data and since there are more than two categories we all know about one hot encoding so if you don't know about one hot encoding you go to youtube you do code basics one hot encoding you will find this tutorial and in this video you can just I have given a very good idea on what one hot encoding is it's basically uh, creating let's say for example for this guy we will create three columns and if the value is month to month the the value in the month to month column will be one and remaining column it will be zero and you can use pandas get dummies function for this purpose okay so what does dummies do so the function looks something like this where in the data you supply your data frame and in the columns like which columns you want to uh, do one hot encoding so let's say internet service okay DSL fiber optic no when you do one hot encoding of that what happens really is this you'll see it created three columns internet DSL fiber optic no so for one column it created three columns and when the value was DSL it created one here and remaining are zero this is one means the customer has fiber optic and remaining are zero again go through my one hot encoding video and you will get an idea on what that is what that thing is so I want to uh, one hot encode not only internet service but other two columns contract and payment method so let's do that so here in the columns I supplied all these three columns and then I'm getting a new data frame which I'm storing it in DF2 and here you will see for my payment method see payment method mail check electronic whatever so you got all those awesome new columns if you do if you do randomly sample let's say three or four rows it will show you all that see at the end we created so many new columns so for this internet service it created three columns for this guy it created three more and for this guy it created four so out of three we created three and three six and four ten columns okay so you see 27 columns now all right so previously there was 20 columns we removed three and added 10 that's why 27 columns all right so now let me quickly check the data types okay so all data types are now numbers there is no string or text okay so let's move on to the next step in deep learning uh, the scaling step is very important and if you look at our uh, data the tenure is in range see, 64 60 all these variables are in range 1 and 0 whereas monthly charges will be in some different range like if you look at monthly charges see 1000 840 etc so we need to scale it all right so how do you scale this really okay so let's check that 
So for scaling, um, I want to figure out which columns I want to scale. So there are three columns that I need to scale. Tenure, monthly charges and total charges. So let's check. See, these two are not in zero and one range. Remaining columns are yes and no, so it's like one or zero. And the tenure, these three columns are not zero and one and hence I want to scale it so that they come into zero and one range. And for that, we can use min max scaler. Okay, so from sklearn, you can import a min max scaler. So min max scaler will do nothing. It will just convert the values in the range zero to one. So if you have values in range, let's say zero to 50, it will convert to zero to one. And after you created min max scaler, you can actually call fit and transform on that columns and then you can store those columns into this data frame okay and when you do this um, now i want to just quickly see what happened see tenure is now in 0.43 0 0.50 so it's in 0 to 1 range similarly mm, if you had I can print the unique values of all the columns by the way and you will see tenure has value see, 0 to 1 range similarly monthly and total charges are in the 0 to 1 range so great my data frame is ready to be used in my machine learning now before you create machine learning model you need to do train and test split okay so let's first figure out what is our x and y all right our x is all the columns except churn and y is churn okay this is very straightforward and let's do train and test split again i have a tutorial on train test split if you don't know what this is we are just splitting our data set into train and test samples okay so our uh, train shape because we are doing 80 to 20 percent split so 80% of samples we are using for training and 20% sample we are using for testing. Ha 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 ha. This is 80%, this is 20%. All right. Sorry, I don't have a great sense of humor. That's why I'm just trying whatever I can. Okay. All right, so now uh, let's look at the columns in our uh, training data set. So we have 26 columns because we had 27, the churn column is removed. Now I'm going to import some TensorFlow libraries and say I imported this TensorFlow library, right? And when you create a neural network, see neural network, okay, let me create a neural network here. So model is keras dot sequential okay so here now you can enter all your uh, layers one by one so the first one is an input layer and the input layer is a dense layer okay this is an input layer so how many neurons do you want to have well i will have same number of neurons as columns so 26 okay so just visualize the neural network each neuron in the input layer is accepting one feature all right what is my input shape well my input shape is 26 okay and this is how you do it um, then by the way this is not so this, this is an input layer and this one, the, the, la the layer we are creating here is the hidden layer, it's the second layer. So you can have even like maybe 20 neurons if you want, okay? And the activation function, we know the general guideline is for hidden layers, we want to have a ReLU as an activation function because it's uh, easy to compute ReLU. And now for the second layer, I will just have some hidden layer, okay? How many neurons do I want? Well, okay, I want to have something less than input. So input is 26 and 10, 20. So let's have 15 maybe, okay? And activation, you don't need in this, in this layer, you don't need input shape because it is derived. It knows what that shape is. 
and the output layer uh, has one and zero so the activation is sigmoid because it's one and zero and the neuron is one okay you know what I am thinking you can have this dense layer or you can remove it because there is input layer and there is one hidden layer and there is one output layer okay so after you do that you create model dot compile where you specify optimizer loss and matrix loss is binary cross entropy because our output is binary zero or one Adam is a very commonly used optimizer you can use an Adam you can try different things see machine learning is an art of like experiments there is no like golden rule here so try different things whatever works best for you and then what I always do is I first run like five epochs and just see you know how that is doing so running it for five epoch gave me some 80% accuracy so now I have a faith that my parameters are looking good if you don't have a good looking parameters meaning you should always try with less epoch and just kind of see see here it started 74% accuracy and then it was increasing so I'm sure if I uh, if I just change it to 100 it will uh, keep on increasing my accuracy you see that it's increasing but the first time when you're trying uh, try with less epoch and try to play with the neural network layers maybe add few hidden more hidden on layers and just kind of see what works and once you run it for five or ten epochs you will get some feel of where your accuracy is going if your accuracy is increasing uh, you can increase your epochs okay so I have a GPU so it is taking very less time but if you don't have a GPU it might take more time but in the end I got 82% accuracy all right so this looks good now let me uh, evaluate the model on X taste and Y taste and on Y taste it gave me 80% accuracy as well so this is looking okay um, you know like a reasonable uh, score I'm getting and I'm now ready to test so when you do model dot predict on X taste YP is Y predicted by the way um, so I see that it is returning me the prediction but the problem is here is two dimensional array so I want to convert this two dimensional array into one dimension and the thing is Y taste that you have is see Y taste that you have I'm just comparing Y taste with YP so Y taste is either 0 and 1 and since this was a sigmoid function this is in range 0 to 1 so it could be any value between 0 to 1 so what I want to do is take this array convert from two dimension to one dimension and convert all these values be, uh, to 0 or 1 for example if it is more than 0.5 let's say this value I will convert it to 1 if it is less than 0.5 for example this I will convert it to 0 okay and I can run a very simple for loop friends this is so easy code I ran a for loop okay and then I'm saying okay if element in this is greater than 0.5 then do this so when I do now um, so y pred see now it's converting it into that range like 0 to 1 so my y taste first 10 samples was this value and first 10 sample here was this value so you can see first two samples it made a right prediction 0 0 third one is 0 and 1 so it got it wrong fourth one is correct fifth one it got it wrong remaining last four zero 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 here last four is zero so it got it right okay we, we understand it's 80 percent accuracy so it might make some mistake now I want to uh, print a classification report so classification report will print uh, statistics on precision and recall and we'll see what precision recall is but this is plotting the performance of overall my overall model I will come back to this uh, but let's first look into um, the confusion matrix now confusion matrix we have seen in all our previous machine learning videos so it should be pretty straightforward what this is telling you is when the truth is one which means when in my excel file when I'm saying customer is leaving uh 
225 time it predicted one but 183 times when the truth was one it predicted zero which means this was an error so anything which is on a diagonal is a correct prediction anything which is not on a diagonal is error so we our model made 183 plus 110 total errors and total correct uh, prediction it made 889 and 225 okay so let's go into so what is our accuracy okay so now accuracy should be very clear right so accuracy is basically correct prediction so 88 anything on diagonal is correct so 889 and 225 okay so that is correct prediction divide by total prediction so total prediction is 889 110 225 183 sum it up okay and when you round this to two decimal places you get 0.78 that is an accuracy okay so you see point that's my accuracy okay it's little it's varying a little bit but it's that's what it is all right so then what is precision and recall so what is this number 0.83 okay so precision means this so precision for see this is zeroth class and this is one class so we have two precision number okay so zeroth class means uh, zero means customers who left your business so out of uh, the predictions that your model made which is let's say 889 okay so just a second okay let me uh, one second Okay, let me pull my other notebook because the data is a little bit different here. So this is the notebook I have. So this is how it looks, 862 and all, so on. So here my accuracy was 0 0.78 and that's what it gave me, 0 0.78. So my precision for the zeroth class is the number of correct prediction that you made for zero. So how many correct prediction? 862. Divide by. 862 plus 179 meaning how many samples it predicted it to be zero so this is predicted so total 862 and 179 it predicted it to be zero and out of that only 862 were correct so 862 divided by 862 plus 179 gives you the precision for zeroth class and it's 0 0.83 so 0 0.83 okay how do I come at 0.63? So that is the precision for class one. So one is this, okay. So how many are the correct prediction for one? Well, anything on diagonal is correct. So 229, correct prediction. But how many it predicted it to be one? So it predicted 229 plus 137. So 137 sample it predicted it to be one, but actually they were error. They were, in reality, they were zero. The truth was zero but totally it predicted so 229 divided by 229 plus 137 uh, that's what I do here and I get 0 0.63 which is 0 0.63 here okay recall why the recall for zeroth class is 0 0.86 okay so recall is 862 divided by 862 plus 137 okay so recall is your total truth uh, total correct prediction for 0 where 862 that divide by total uh, actual zeroth uh, samples so total samples which has John set to 0 are 862 plus 137 and the recall is nothing but 862 divided by the total samples which has 0 in reality and same thing for uh, 1 so I hope that clarifies your understanding on precision recall. I will make a separate video probably so that I can uh, give you a more better understanding. All right, that's all I had for this tutorial and now the most important part of this tutorial, which is an exercise. In the exercise, I have given a link of another Kegel data set for bank customer churn prediction. This is the data set. You should click on this button and download this data set and build a similar artificial neural network model once you build it 
try to analyze accuracy, precision, recall, and different parameters. So it will be very similar model that we build in this tutorial. But since the data set is different, you will get an opportunity to do cleanup, to do data visualization on your own. I'm not going to provide any solution. You can find some notebooks on Kaggle, but uh, in the video description below, I have a link of this particular notebook, which we covered in today's video. And at the very end, I have an exercise uh, description. So please do the exercise. It's very important that you work on these exercises on your own. I hope you like this tutorial. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and thank you very much for watching.